Hello, welcome to worship. My name is Sam Mahack and I am pastor here at Mariner United Methodist Church in Spring Hill, Florida. And uh, looking forward for our uh, next few moments together as we worship the Lord in this virtual capacity. As we begin our time together, I invite us to read together this historic affirmation of our faith that unites each and every one of us who is a follower of Jesus Christ. Let us read these words together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Majesty Worship its majesty unto Jesus be all glory, power, and love. Majesty, kingdom authority, Jesus who died, now crucified. King of all kings, so exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus, magnify, come glorify, Christ Jesus the King, majesty. Worship his majesty, Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. As we gather in worship, whether it be in our homes or in a sanctuary, it is good to know that as we gather, God is with us. And so as we recite our call to worship, I invite us to reflect upon the ministry of the Holy Spirit of Almighty God in our midst this day. Let us read these words together. When the world divides us, come, Holy Spirit, make us one. When the world calls us orphaned, come, Holy Spirit, make us a family. When the world leads us astray, come, Holy Spirit, call us home. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and fill our hearts, our homes, and our church. I always enjoy doing something uh, a little different, perhaps, for some of our younger worshipers this day. Uh, young, we know, might be young at heart or young in age, whichever the case may be. We pray as you uh, watch the following that God might bring a smile to your face and warmth to your heart. Stories of the Bible. God sends the Holy Spirit. These are the apostles. Hello. They followed Jesus during his time on earth. Before Jesus went to heaven, he told them to stay in Jerusalem until God sent the gift he promised. See ya. So after Jesus went to heaven, the apostles stayed in Jerusalem along with the other people who believed in Jesus. One day they were all gathered together when there was a sound from heaven like a mighty windstorm. Whoa! Then what looked like flames appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in other languages, and so they started speaking. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, they came running to see what it was. What's going on? When they saw the believers speaking in their own languages, they were shocked and amazed. Hey, do you hear this? 
They wondered, how can this be? These people are from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages about the wonderful things God has done. What can this mean? Nah, whatever. But others in the crowd didn't believe that it was really a miracle and thought the believers were just acting oddly. Nah. Then Peter stepped forward and shouted to the crowd, Hey, all you! Listen carefully, all you! He told them that they were not acting strangely, but that this was from God. He reminded them that God said this would happen long ago. Then Peter told them about how Jesus was crucified, but then raised to life again, just as God had said he would be. He told them that Jesus was now in heaven and that God had given the Holy Spirit to them as he had promised. Peter's words changed what the people thought and felt, and they asked, Brothers, what should we do? Peter told them, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow! Peter continued to preach to the crowd for a long time, and those who believed what Peter said were baptized. 3,000 people were baptized and added to the church that day. Then all the believers listened to the apostles' teaching and practiced what they taught. Hey! They met together in fellowship, shared meals, and prayed together. They were amazed as the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Here you go. Take this. Ah, oh, thank you. They helped those in need. Here, this is for you. Thank you. Worshiped together at the temple every day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy all while praising God and enjoying each other. And each day, God added to their fellowship those who were being saved. As we approach the throne of God in prayer for a few uh, moments, uh, a couple of things I would like to offer you a few moments of silence, uh, simply to share whatever personal praise and or request that you have with the Lord, or perhaps just to center your thoughts upon the fact that uh, we have this incredible privilege of speaking with God in these next moments together. Uh, then I will invite us to read together uh, the prayer that some of you may be aware of and to have read before, the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Following that, we will conclude with the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus himself taught us to pray. And for now, a few moments of silence as we begin. Let us read these words and let us make them our own. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. And where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. And now the prayer that Jesus taught, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. One of the tangible ways that we express our worship is the giving of our tithes and offerings. 
take in a portion of the material blessing that God has given to you and to me and returning that into his hands that he might use it in his grace and mercy to extend his kingdom both in heaven and on earth. So with that in mind, just once again, thank you for each of you and your contribution to the work that God is doing through Mariner. In order to offer to the Lord your tithes and offerings, uh, you may do so by mailing them here to the church via regular mail or bringing them by the church office at uh, your convenience. Uh, there is a secure lockbox outside the office door where you may leave them if we are not happen to be open at the time. Also, to give online via our website, marinerumc.org. Uh, if you log into there, you'll see right at the top an online giving link that you can use to uh, uh, submit to you, submit to the church your tithe and offering for the Lord's work. Allow me to pray. Father God, we thank you for each gift and each giver. We pray that you would uh, bless us and allow us to experience the joy of giving to you and the joy of seeing these material blessings reap spiritual rewards. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If he keeps on blessing and blessing if he keeps on pouring it on if his love just keeps getting richer if he keeps on giving a song if my cup gets fuller and fuller if my prayers keep on getting through if it keeps getting better and a better oh lord i don't know what i'm gonna do when i gave my heart to jesus when I claimed him as my king When the gloom and fear was lifted My old heart just started to sing Then the song just kept getting bigger And it thrilled my heart through and through If it keeps getting better and a better, oh Lord I don't know what I'm gonna do If he keeps on blessing and blessing if he keeps on pouring it on If his love just keeps getting richer If he keeps on singing a song If my cup gets fuller and fuller If my prayers keep on getting through If it keeps getting better and better Oh Lord, I don't know what I'm gonna do If he keeps on blessing and blessing if he keeps on pouring it on If his love just keeps getting richer If he keeps on giving a song If my cup gets fuller and fuller If my prayers keep on getting through If he keeps getting better and better Oh Lord, I don't know what I'm gonna do if it keeps getting better and better, oh Lord, I don't know what I'm gonna do. If it keeps getting better and better, oh Lord, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Have you ever wished you could uh, speak another language. Now, I'm sure that some of you that are participating in this time of worship today do speak more than one language, that uh, uh, either perhaps English is not your first language, it is your second, or perhaps English is your first language and you've learned one or more additional languages along the way. When the early church was founded, one of the challenges that the early church faced was the reality that the gospel had been opened up to all people everywhere. But one of the challenges with that was the fact that uh, because uh, it was open to all people everywhere, uh, a number of cultures spoke different languages. 
And so the capacity and the ability to come together and worship together was inhibited by the fact that uh, different languages were spoken. And uh, we have the same challenge certainly today in our world as uh, every culture has a, a different language. And as we seek to bring those cultures together, we face the challenge of overcoming the language barrier. And we can do that in a variety of ways. Uh, we can do that through uh, having uh, someone translate for us. Um, in the case of the Bible, for example, we have the Bible that is written down in several different languages. These are but two examples of ways we seek to overcome the language barrier uh, in order to uh, acknowledge and understand that as the Church of Jesus Christ, we have a relationship with Jesus that transcends even our languages. When the early church was founded, God wanted to be perfectly clear that he was throwing, wide op uh, th throwing the doors wide open for all to come to know and love and have a relationship with him through Jesus Christ, whatever their language. And so when he began the church, approximately 40 days after uh, Jesus had uh, risen from the grave and shortly after he had gone to heaven and ascended to the right hand of God, we had an event that uh, in the history of the church referred to as Pentecost. When God sent his Holy Spirit upon uh, his people, and uh, as he did so, he gave them the capacity to speak in different languages. Allow me just to read uh, a bit of an excerpt from uh, that particular uh, opera uh, situation, that particular beginning of the church, the day of Pentecost. In Acts chapter 2, and again, these are just some selected verses, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. No, this was, uh, um, this was what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. Uh, that word no there uh, comes uh, at an awkward point. Uh, the people that were listening to them speak in different languages, unfortunately, thought perhaps they'd been drinking a little bit too much. And uh, Peter, who's delivering the message, wanted to be sure that they understood that was not the case. And so he quotes this passage. He says, no, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. The young men will see visions, and your old men will see dreams. You see, he wanted to make it very clear that uh, the, what was happening that day was a result of the Holy Spirit coming upon people of different cultures and different languages, and by that moment in time, recognizing the fact that, as I mentioned, the doors to Jesus, the doors to a relationship with God through Jesus had been cast wide open. But the Holy Spirit intervened to give them the capacity to speak and understand each other. Now, as I mentioned, we do that a little bit different today. I'm not really sure that I've ever seen an instance where uh, we've had uh, a number of different people suddenly start speaking in other languages. Uh, I'm sure it happens. Not something that I personally experience. But what I would like to talk to you about for the next few moments is to answer the question, if we don't necessarily always experience the Holy Spirit in that way, how do we experience the ministry of the Spirit today? Well, certainly that is a big question. Uh, it's an important question because the Holy Spirit, as a member of the Holy Trinity, has a very distinct responsibility and ministry as part of the Trinity, and we don't have time right now to uh, go over all of that in detail. But I would so I'd like to take a few moments to just look at Scripture and look at one aspect of the ministry of the Holy Spirit that transcends all cultures, all times, and all languages. And that is that God has given through the Holy Spirit you and me specific gifts that we can use to serve the Lord. In the Bible, there, uh, it is described this way. He says there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working. But in all of them, and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now, to one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given, uh, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. And then he goes on to list some examples of gifts. He says, to one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. 
to another gifts of healing by that one spirit, and to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between the spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of those tongues. All these are the work of the one and the same spirit as he distributes them to each one just as he has determined. We read in that passage a, a, an acknowledgement that upon the people of God, just like on the day of Pentecost, he has given each and every one of us the gift and presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And one of the primary ways that the Holy Spirit ministers within us and particularly through us is through the particular spiritual gift that he's given. And he gives a list of some examples of those gifts. Perhaps as I read through that list, there were more, one or more of those that uh, as you read it, you resonated with that and recognized that maybe that was a particular gift, a, a spiritual a capacity or ability that God had given to you that was in some way, shape or form a bit exceptional. Uh, as I mentioned, this is not a, a total list of all the possible gifts, but they do serve by way of example. But what can we say about the Spirit's gifts to us today that's important that we can take away from this time and understand? Well, let me just lift out of those verses what I see, at least, of three little ways or three aspects of the ministry of the Spirit in our midst through the giving of his gifts. First of all, it is very, very clear that each and every one of us have at least one gift. It is very, very clear from that passage that everyone has received some sort of gift of the Spirit through which they can bless others. We all have a gift to use. Uh, those of you that know me like uh, know that I like to use sports analogies quite often, and, and one of the things that's important in most sports is the value of teamwork. Even in individ more individualized sports, for example, golf or tennis, you have people, you have coaches, you have caddies, you have those working behind the scenes to help the kind of front and center athlete to succeed. So even in the more individualized, uh, individualized type sports, there, there is a team. One of my favorite sports uh, is baseball. And uh, I'm uh, amazed at the different capacities and abilities because each of the positions on the baseball field need to be, uh, uh, be held, need to be uh, played by a person with a particular skill at that position. Uh, pitchers need to pitch, catchers need to catch, batters need to bat, and, and it takes everybody working together. Plus the coaches and the general manager, it all takes a team. But on the team, there are certain things that individual members excel at perhaps a bit more than the others on the team. And it's the same way with the Church of Jesus Christ. You see, God never intended the church to be a spectator sport. Each position, each need of the church can be met through one of the gifts that God has given to us, uh, given to his people. And whatever gift God has given you, may it uh, be a gift that comes through speaking, uh, maybe a gift of wisdom, uh, maybe God has given you with ability to work with your hands in a special way. Whatever the gift God has given you, uh, God wants you to use it and to use it in whatever manner you might find uh, useful to do that. Lord knows we certainly need all the gifts operating in the church today, especially here at Mariner, for us to fulfill the mission that God has given to us. So the first thing to remember, and I want you to understand from the gifts this day, is that each and every one of us have one. The other thing I want you to understand from this passage is that all gifts are important. All gifts are important. As a pastor, quite often I will talk to people who feel like their particular area of excellence really isn't that relevant. It's, it's not something that stupendous, or at least from their perspective, they don't feel like it's worthy of a lot of attention. The problem is the Bible disagrees with that. The passage that we just read tells us that all gifts are important. I recognize that some gifts are more visible. There are certain giftings that by virtue of their particular gift, uh, the person who has that gift is a little more visible to the body of Christ as a whole. For example, as someone who I hope has the pastoral gift and perhaps the teaching gift, and uh, I'm kind of the visible representation of the church, um, it might be tempting to think that my gift in some way, shape, or form is better than or more important than someone else's gift, and it's not. 
I simply can do what God has called me to do. I cannot do many of the other things that God has called the church to do. And so I am so grateful for people, volunteers or professional, who have administrative talents, who have talents uh, in the technical area, who have talents when it comes to uh, educating even me on the nuances of scripture that I might pass them on to you. These are but a few examples of other gifts in the body of Christ and when, they, uh, when we withhold the use of that gift because we think it's not important or we don't think it's as important as someone else's gift, we, re we withhold from the church, we withhold from the body something of very great importance. And so my friend, whatever your gift is, no matter whether it's more public or perhaps something that you can exercise behind the scenes, please know this, all gifts in the sight of God are important. And it's important to remember that and feel good about the gift that God has given to you and God has given to me. You see, all gifts are important because God intended that the body of Christ should uh, have a mutual dependence on one another. You see, if he deposited all the gifts into one individual, we wouldn't need each other as much. So it creates a mutual dependence. But it also creates an individual significance because as we use the particular gift that God has given to you and God has given to me, we feel something of the thrill and the excitement of knowing that God has used us. And he's particularly used us by putting our gift to work. <clears throat> all of us have a gift. All gifts are important. And then finally, I would say this, all gifts are to be used to serve others. You know, unlike much of the culture in which we find ourselves today, the church is not a consumer society. We live in uh, here in our particular situation. I realize it's not the same across the world, but for most of us, uh, we have experienced a, a rather significant share of God's material blessings relative to the rest of the world. But we've been taught that uh, we are to use that blessing to acquire things. Nothing wrong with acquiring things. I'm not suggesting that it's wrong to have a hobby and acquire things and to uh, do uh, acquire various items that might make life a little easier, a little better. But primarily, the gifting of God has been used that we might use that gift to serve others in some way and not simply to satisfy our own needs. Uh, the church is not a consumer society. It is a giving group of people. We give by putting our gift to work to benefit others within the body of Christ for the common good. Go back to the passage again as I read uh, <clears throat> this passage. To one through the Spirit is given a message of wisdom. He goes through all the gifts and he says, all these are the work of one and the same Spirit. And he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Going back. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. These scriptures tell us that uh, when we withhold a gift, we withhold something that the church needs. The church wants to benefit and needs to benefit from your particular gifting. And so this morning or this evening or this afternoon, whatever time you may be watching this and participating in virtual worship, I invite you to think and ask yourself the question, how has God gifted me? What are some of the exceptional capacities I have? Not in a prideful way, but in a grateful way, because it's the Holy Spirit that has given you that gift. And so accept it, receive it, and then use it. Find a way to use that gift to benefit others. There's a gentleman in our church who I greatly admire. I will not mention the name. I do not wish to embarrass him, and I didn't have a chance to ask the permission. But one of the ministries he has is simply speaking to people as he goes through his daily life. It may be at the grocery store or some other uh, location of, um, of, of business that he needs to be at or just out and about at the park. And he, he'll go up to people under the prompting of the Holy Spirit and just say, hey, uh, identify himself and say, could I pray for you? You know what? That's exercising an exceptional gift of prayer. And I only use that to say, by way of example, so many ways that we can use our gifts. And it illustrates the principle that I'm trying to say here is that gifts aren't meant just for our own consumption. If you have a gift of, a, of praying for others and have the faith to do so, don't just pray for yourself. Pray for your church. Pray for your community. Invite others uh, that uh, you may wish to approach to pray with you. And so... As we think about the ministry of the Spirit today, I'm not really sure uh, if you speak one language or several. 
What I do know is this, is that God has given you a gift, that all of us have a gift, that all gifts are important, and all gifts can be used to serve others in the name of Christ. God bless you today. Have a wonderful one, and remember this so much. God loves you very much. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glory. Name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name.